Um, yeah, so let's start. A uh, few words about me. Um, I'm a Golang developer and tech lead uh, at Converge. Uh, we mainly dealing with Kubernetes and cloud native stuff. Um, we're building a platform for AI and machine learning on top of the Kubernetes. Um, I'm a husband and father of two kids. And finally, I am in the middle of my skipper course. And I actually, I'm at the end, and I'm really excited about this. And uh, so what is talk about? Uh, we will talk a bit about containers and device sharing, um, and then how this works in Kubernetes, how the Kubernetes manage uh, resources and how Kubernetes manage these resources. Um, what are the production grade challenges? And finally, we will talk about MetaGPU, which is our open source project. Um, yeah, so uh, let's start. Um, so let's talk a bit about how we going, how we can share device on Linux. And if I will take a, a simple example where I am creating simple loopback file, and I would like to share this a loopback file, like I would like to mount it. Um, and I would like to mount between, I, I would like to use it between many different processes, right? So um, I will be able to mount it as read-only uh, as much as I want, right? But if I will try to mount it as a read-write, it will fail. Now, this is pretty obvious, uh, a pretty obvious example which can uh, teach us one simple fact. Sharing devices between processes uh, on Linux will be depends on two things, basically, on the device driver and on the setup, on the configuration. So in, in some cases, I will be able to share device. And in another um, case, I, won't, I might be not be able to share this device. So with that, let's move to the um, second, second simple uh, question. And we are talking about Kubernetes and AI and GPUs. So uh, how easily I can share GPU device between two Docker containers? What do you think, guys? Is, is if, like, how easily I can share my GPU device? Um, so I think the most simple thing that we can do is just figure it out, right? So I have very simple TensorFlow script, and this TensorFlow script uses um, uh, GPU, GPU index zero. And I would like to run two Docker containers and see if they both will be running and if they both will be use this uh, GPU. So uh, let me show you really quickly. Uh, this is my bash script. This is my two uh, containers and I will just execute this script and my two containers are up and running if I will check logs. And this, so this is a GPU uh, minus one container, and this is logs for the second one. So it seems like my my both Docker containers are up and running, which means I were able to share single GPU between two different containers, right? So what about NVIDIA SMI? Yeah. So you see these uh, processes; they belong to these containers, and it seems like everything is working. So um, if I came from the mm, from non-Kubernetes area, right, but I do want to use Docker or so containers in general, I can say that I will be able to share my GPU devices between my containers, which is really good. Uh, now, uh, I will clean up this one. So what about Kubernetes? Will, uh, will be it possible to achieve exactly the same behavior with the Kubernetes, right? Um, so again, uh, like it's open question. It might be, it, it might be yes, might be no. But again, we can easily figure this out, right? Uh, so let me jump to my second panel, and and you see now I'm going to deploy exactly the same container, but this time I'm going to use uh, Kubernetes manifest and Kubernetes cluster. I will create two replicas of, the, uh, uh, of this container, like two replicas inside this uh, uh, deployment, and I will use one uh, GPU, exactly the same scenario as it was with uh, Docker. So um, now, if I will apply this, if I will uh, create like that. Yeah, so my, um, you see, I, I created 
I created this deployment and one uh, container is running, the second one is pending. Any idea why it's pending? Pending on what, or what fall it is pending? It's waiting for new machine. Okay, let's, let's see why it's waiting and we can pretty easily describe this. And uh, indeed it has inefficient NVIDIA GPU. Um, this is what at least Kubernetes uh, think happening. Now, uh, okay, it's saying that I, I, have, I have not enough uh, GPUs. Let me run NVIDIA SMI and see what is going on. So indeed, there is only one process that is running, but my GPU utilization is equal to zero and I'm using only two gig of memory where I have in total 12, almost 12 gigabyte of memory. So um, Kubernetes just, just not aware about the fact that I do have enough GPU um, capacity, it's just saying I do not have enough, um, right? So, uh, and this behavior seems not right because if I came from the Linux world, right, I were able to share my GPU device. Then I took Docker and I also able to share a GPU device. So why Kubernetes does not allow me to achieve the same behavior, right? Because Kubernetes is based on Linux, it is based on, on containers, but it is not. In fact, we see that it is not possible. So, you know what? Let me clean this up, clean up, right? Like that. And, um, and now I want to achieve exactly the same behavior as with um, Dockers. I would like to achieve exactly the same behavior with the Kubernetes. So, um, yeah, I will change a bit my deployment manifest and I will try to apply it again. Now, um, so what kind of changes I will apply to achieve uh, the same behavior as I had with Docker? Uh, so first of all, I will remove these resource limits and NVIDIA, I will just remove it. You see, this is the 10.yaml file that I'm going to apply and uh, we won't find here any nvidia.com anymore. And this is first change. The second change is I will add one environment variable, nvidia visible devices, and I will just statically um, set it to zero. So now let me create this YAML like that and see what will happen. Okay, so now I have, like I have single, uh, container, um, let me scale it to two containers and let's see if it will be running. It, it is running. Okay, it's really cool. So let me scale it to four containers. Oh, not 41. <laughs> By the way, 41 will work as well. Um, let's see. Yeah, so I have four containers. This is awesome. What about NVIDIA SMI? And NVIDIA SMI, I see four processes, so I was able to share my GPU, right? I did not install any devices plugins, I mean nothing. Uh, I, I achieved exactly the same behavior as I had with Docker and with Linux. And basically, like from this point, I can go to my manager and say, hey, I, I am able to share my GPU, like GPUs, I am able to achieve um, um, the fractional GPU, right, without even writing a piece of code. But probably if this was true, we, this talk wouldn't happen, right? There is a reason why uh, uh, I'm presenting. Uh, uh, what? Yeah, so yeah, this is exactly what I, I, I'm going to talk next. Uh, so exactly, we, we use, uh, we, usually we use Kubernetes uh, when we have um, at least plans to use one, uh, more than one node. And, um, right, so, uh, and if we will have more than one node, we will have um, many different device specs, right? I might have, uh, different amount of GPU units, different amount of memory on each device, and, and I will need to address this in a certain way. Um, also, how I will choose the right node, this is also something that I need to care of 
in, in some way. Uh, how are you going to calculate total availability and capacity? In my example, I were able to create, like I started from one, go to two, I scaled it to four, and I can, like, it's completely unmanageable. Someone need to enforce and calculate what is the availability and capacity, like to how many pieces I would like to split my device. And finally, what to do if some devices are not healthy, right? Today we have all these cloud uh, node groups in, in clouds and, and we have scaled to zero policies and so on and so on. And might be my device is not healthy, maybe yet not healthy, and I need to address this as well. And probably there are many other uh, reasons that I'm not mentioning here, but they are exist, right? So with that, what kind of resources uh, we have uh, out of the box um, inside Kubernetes? I mean, what resources Kubernetes manage for us? And we have CPU, memory, ephemeral storage, and huge pages. All those are available out of the box, which means Kubernetes is aware about total capacity and allocatable, um, which help us as the end users to schedule our workloads in the, in the way that we are aware about like what amount of CPU I'm going to request and, and the memory and if I have enough or not enough and Kubernetes will match uh, the right node for me and so on. Uh, but obviously, uh, we have much more resources than these four, right? One of them is GPU. But GPU, uh, but Kubernetes itself does not address GPU issue in any way. Um, and this is where the custom node resource and device plugin came, uh, came in. Actually, what Kubernetes allow us uh, to do is um, we can extend Kubernetes and implement required logic for our um, device, right? So I can say, I can decide now how I'm going to allocate um, device, right? What should happen exactly when I'm allocating device and so on and so on. Uh, so very quickly, um, the Kubernetes device plugin based on gRPC service, we, you need to implement gRPC service. It will communicate to Kubelet uh, through Unix socket and you will need to implement five RPC methods and one registration call. All right, so let's see the meta GPU in actually how it's working. Uh, so in terms of architecture, we have these um, three binaries. Uh, so meta GPU, actually this is mm, daemon set, which is running on each uh, Kubernetes node. And we have um, MGCTL, which is a um, binary for management and Prometheus exporter to export some metrics. Uh, the share logic by default, we're going to split uh, each GPU unit to 100 pieces, where each piece uh, uh, representing 100%. Um, the memory and GPU utilization computed, computed relatively to allocated amount of meta uh, GPUs. All right, so if I have one GPU card, I will have 100 uh, meta GPUs. If I have two cards, like one card, two units, I will have 200 um, meta GPUs. Okay, so let's try and make it fractional, but this time let's make it fractional in the right way. Um, so, yeah, I will create this YAML file and it's still pending now, right? So I will check. I will, I will edit deployment, and this time, um, instead, uh, instead of requesting nvidia.com, I will ask 30% like that of um, meta, meta GPU, right? Uh, Converge.io, meta GPU. This is what, what I'm going to ask for. And I'm saving this one. Um, let's look on the pods now. Okay, so now my two pods are up and running, uh, which is exactly what I want to have. Uh, and now I can try and scale it. I will try to scale it to four. Let's see if I will be able to scale it to four. Yeah, and obviously 
I won't be able to scale it to four, right? Because I have 100% and I allocated 30% to three pods, so one won't be able to run. Now, if I will look on the node itself and I will describe this node, uh, what I will find out is now I have Converge I.O. meta GPU, which is equal to 100. And from this, I allocated 90. All, all right. So these actually allow me to um, manage resource allocation in a way, like in manageable way, right? It's not like that now that users, any users can create as much as they want. Now they can create exactly um, up to available resources. Um, all right. So, all right. So the next thing that I would like to show you is actually Kubernetes, uh, like how GPU is natively, how native GPU in, inside Kubernetes. Um, so um, let's, let me show you something. I will create, again, it's a same, same script, it's MNIST training with, with TensorFlow and my, uh, in the one second, my container is up and running. Okay, now it's running, which is cool. Now I'm, now I'm running as a root. So I have SSH access to this machine and I'm a root. And if uh, as a root, I will run NVIDIA SMI, I will see my process up and running, which is good basically, right? Pretty obvious. So if I will do the same command from the container, I do not have any, any uh, processes available, right? So why is that? I mean, something is going wrong here. Um, now, usually, uh, when we are running inside cloud and we have this, all these immutable um, nodes, uh, we, like the data scientists, won't have access uh, to the uh, SSH node, right? This is usually what will happen. And, and, and if, I am, uh, like, if I'm running just my, uh, my MNIST model, training and I just want to see what is the utilization. I mean, I, I just, I, as a data scientist, want to see what is the actually memory usage. I won't be able to get this information. So uh, we wanted to address this by, uh, we wanted to address this issue. So we created MGCTL binary, which allow us, and not only us, but our, our users to see all the relevant information for, for their workloads. So again, as a root, I am able to execute this command, and, but now I have much more information. So for example, um, NVIDIA SMI does not provide for me any information about Kubernetes itself, right? I have only the, the, the process name and, and that's all basically the memory and the PID, but, but I am running inside Kubernetes, so I, need, I, I would like to see, for example, the pod name, the namespace of the pod, what is the amount of, um, Meta GPU request is allocated for this uh, um, for, for this pod, and also maybe n some node information, like on, on which exactly node it is running. Now, if I will run the same command as um, um, container owner, so I, I, I'm getting also some information, useful information, which is not available when I'm using uh, NVIDIA SMI, right? Um, and this is like pretty useful, I, I believe, because now users, uh, they do not need uh, any more root access and they're completely okay to go and, and run this um, command inside containers. Okay. So I will, I will clean up this as well and move, I will move forward. So what about uh, limit enforcement? Now, when we, uh, able to split, to share a single uh, GPU, what will make, like we need some, some way to enforce um, the amount of memory or uh, GPU utilization that has been allocated for, uh, for, for each share, right? Because like the Kubernetes will, um, will make the schedule for us, but in the same way as it's happened with the re regular memory, right? But C groups, will enforce memory. Now, we do not have C groups uh, for GPU, and th that's why we need to address this uh, problem also. Uh, so, let me create. Uh, 
Okay, so now I created again two uh, MNIST um, training uh, jobs, and if I will run MGCTL again, what I will see is actually um, my second container is become becomes uh, red, right? You see, it's red. Yeah, it's red. So um, why it's red? Because it uses more memory than it should, right? So I have ten um, meta GPU request, which is equal to 10% of the uh, mm, GPU unit, and it should use up to one gig, but in fact, it used much more. So what can I do with that now? So um, I can either issue an alert, right, or I can just pick up a phone and say, hey, dear user, you are using more than you should, and this is if I am a nice person. Um, but maybe, I, but I can, uh, but also I can enforce this, uh, in the same way as C groups enforce this, just by killing this uh, process. So I can achieve this enforcement. If I will uh, change some configuration, like memory enforcement, this is currently it's set to false. If I will change it to true, and now I will, I will need to restart my device plugin, just to make sure it's fast. Yeah, now my um, uh, device plugin uh, is, has been restarted, and now in a few moments we will see that this container, you see now, it's t it, it has been terminated. And so each time this container will start, and once it will use more, uh, uh, more memory in this uh, scenario when, uh, than it should, this container is going to be killed, and this, the, the, it will fall to the, you know, the crash loopback. Um, state, so then we can choose how to address this. We either reduce amount of memory or uh, we increase amount of uh, meta GPU requests. All right, so right now, oh yeah, so, uh, so how the event uh, looks like, right? Oh yeah, yeah, so currently, we do not have events, but what should happen is actually we have um, uh, exporter, Prometheus exporter, which can be used with the Prometheus and alert manager, and based on that, uh, users can create um, an alert. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, and we need to actually, like it's open source project, by the way, it's completely open in GitHub. Uh, so uh, any contribution are welcome. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, yeah, so with that, basically that's all what I wanted to share with you. Uh, fast recap, so max utilization, limit enforcement, dynamic resharing, easy of, of use and Kubernetes native. This is what we trying to achieve. It is open source, please contribute, use it, and thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Hi. Hey. Hello. I don't know if you can hear me. Hello? Hello? It's good? Okay. Thanks for that talk. Um, I was wondering if you might comment a little bit on how this interacts, if, it, if at all, with the uh, vendor tools that do the same thing from NVIDIA, for example, the sort of multi-instance multi -instance GPU, which I saw you were running in your driver screenshot. Yeah, so uh, good question, thank you. Um, so the thing is, uh, first of all, not each um, GPU card has support for um, MIG. There are uh, many, many uh, other cards, old cards, which does not support MIG, and we still want to share them. Uh, so this is the first comment. The second thing is uh, the, uh, to configure MIG uh, might be some, uh, sometimes not easy thing to do. Also, it has some limitation. You might need to reboot the node. You cannot easily um, 
um, reshare, right? Because if you would like to reshare, you need to stop all the workloads and so on and so on. So the plans for this project is to use um, NVIDIA open source libraries, uh, NVML, for example, which they have, and, and build on top of it cloud native Kubernetes na native tooling, which will uh, simplify day to day work. Yeah. So, as a user in a team, and especially when you're running in a multi-tenant approach, um, how do you get an information earlier on on what GPU resources is on the node before you start like scheduling? And also, if you do schedule and there is no node, is there any possibility of that actually working with cluster auto scalers? So, let's scale up uh, more GPU nodes. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, right. So, um, again, the plans, uh, now what, what I showed is actually converge.io slash meta GPU. Now, the plan is, the, the real plan, like the big plan, is to create a logic which will help, which will allow you to bind a resource name to certain uh, GPU. So, so you, you, you might imagine that you will have multiple uh, resources names and they will be bounded to, um, to, multiple, to, to different cards. So for example, I even can create um, a resource which will I call Dmitri, converge.io slash Dmitri, and this resource will represent um, certain GPU which only I can use, so for example. And regarding the multi-tenancy uh, and the way you, you can see all these devices. So we have different um, visibility scopes. And when you are running this command with the uh, device level visibility scope, you will see um, the complete spec of device. Now to be able to see devices between different machines, right now you will need to um, run this command on each uh, node. We have plans to create, like we need to see how community behaves, if, if we really have like people like it, people want to use it. So then we will put some effort on this and we will create a um, um, central control plan where you can see all your devices, uh, Grafana dashboards, alerts, you know, uh, everything that really needed for production grade uh, uh, open source project. Thank you. One quick question: Is it possible to overcommit, basically, so to request, for example, no. many yeah. devices, but set the enforcement limit only if user like yeah. really, really eat yeah. above the cap? Yeah, right. So, the, good question. So, the thing is, um, you, yes, you can overcommit, but what will happen is there's two scenarios. If you overcommit, um, your container might be get killed or it might be continue running as usual. To avoid overcommitment, you need to add support inside your code. So uh, what does it mean inside your code? When I'm running my TensorFlow uh, scripts, I'm specifying the total amount of uh, available memory. All right? So, and this needs to, to be uh, a tango between um, device plugin and your code. In certain way, it's very similar to Java, right? So if I will run Java without um, max and mean parameter for the memory, it will use all the memory regardless what I configured inside uh, my uh, Kubernetes limit and request. So in short, yes, overcommitment is possible. Um, and to avoid overcommitment, you need to apply changes at the code level or uh, you can leave your code as is, and then you can decide what should happen when overcommit is happen. Either to kill this container or just leave it running and get some alert for this. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.